Hello friends, in this video I am going to show you the new product we designed for applications that require miniature or small form factor. That's why we have named the device series as MF series, miniature form factor series. The applications include uh, pet tracking and uh, tracking of uh, animal migration paths and uh, hidden installation applications. We did get some requirements for uh, tracking expensive laptops and other assets and uh, uh, migration paths of uh, wild animals. So we thought of designing this small device. Uh, even though Wildtrack V2 was already small enough, uh, but the uh, height of the Wildtrack V2 uh, was the problem in these applications. Modern day laptops are getting thinner and uh, to insert uh, devices into collars of uh, animals or pets, uh, the device needs to be really thin and uh, small. So we designed this device and uh, got rid of all the unnecessary parts of the V2 design which were not needed for this application. Uh, like the MOSFET drivers uh, and the MP2617 switching battery charger. USB connector was removed and replaced with this 10-pin uh, uh, super thin flex connector from uh, TE connectivity. This connector has SWD lines drawn out of it uh, which can be used for flashing and debugging the MCU. UART lines and USB lines of GSM modules are also drawn which can be used for upgrading the GSM module firmware. This time uh, there are two through hole connectors, uh, one for uh, charging input and other for battery connections. Earlier we had uh, SMD pads for uh, battery connector but uh, they were weak and ripped off uh, on moment. Uh, the charger chip uh, MP2617 which was used in the Wildtrack V2 is replaced with a simple MCP7381 SOT package chip. Uh, for charging the LiPo or lithium ion batteries at uh, about 100 to 500 milliamps of uh, charge rate. Since the device is small and meant for applications where there is not much space available, uh, we assume that the batteries also will be small. Uh, that's why we selected this simple battery charger uh, which can charge uh, at about 100 to 500 milliamps of charge rate for the small batteries. The big change on the hardware is the GPS module which has the major contribution in reduction of the device size. It's the Telit made SE868 K3 AL device. There are two variants of this module SE868 K3 and SE868 K7. K3 is GNSS and uh, K7 is GPS uh, uh, module. So K7 is slightly cheaper than K3. Again in size variants so there are uh, uh, SE868 K3 A series and SE868 uh, uh, K3 AL series uh, as used on uh, uh, these devices. The, the thinner one which you can see here is the K3 AL series. This L extension in the part naming indicates that it has a very thin patch antenna uh, compared to the other part. There is about 2 mm uh, variation in this uh, in their height differences. This height uh, advantage comes with a lesser GPS sensitivity but these are designed for variable applications and uh, I don't see any major difference in performance in uh, both the devices. We have tested both of them. The SC868 modules are slightly expensive. Uh, we can say about uh, twice the price of uh, SIM39EA or N39 modules. The module has uh, uh, LGA pads and uh, uh, they are underneath the module and uh, are not visible. So which makes it uh, very difficult to inspect the soldering issues if there are uh, any present, if the board doesn't work properly or something like that. We haven't encountered any issues so far uh, even though all the components on these boards are uh, uh, soldered by applying paste uh, by hand and uh, uh, the components also placed manually by hand. So we haven't got the stencil done yet uh, so they have been assembled manually. The main parts of uh, V2 design, the uh, MCU and the accelerometer and the GSU module are uh, all the same parts. So the STM32 L051 MCU which is used in V2 is used here and uh, the MMA8652 accelerometer is used for uh, motion uh, detection and the SIM 800C quad band 2G module is used here. Uh, we are designing uh, one more uh, similar form factor uh, version in uh, MF series. Uh, there will be variants for uh, 4G, LTE and NBOT version and uh, another one will be for uh, LoRa networks. We got a battery of the same size uh, of the device of about uh, 350 mAh capacity and uh, we did run some tests uh, to find the consumption for different applications so that uh, we can showcase to the customers uh, saying that uh, uh, if you run the device like this, this is how much long it will last like that. 
so uh, technically it can run all the configurations that v2 can run uh, like the long interval applications of uh, sending pings like uh, one ping per day by sms or by gprs or hourly uh, pa packets by sms or gprs and uh, like motion trigger data sending and continuous tracking mode etc the, the first test we did was uh, we ran the device in uh, one hour ping rate and uh, it lasted for 48 hour to about 49 hours uh, approximately and uh, at uh, one ping per day the device uh, was sending the gprs packets so uh, it lasted for about uh, 45 days it's still running the test is still going on that's sending the data while we are making this video uh, test was uh, started on 19 september and the device is still running you can see the data here in this uh, rest api so what does this results mean Imagine if you put your V2MF device with a battery inside your pet scholar or a laptop, uh, then you could uh, track it for about 1.5 to 2 months uh, on this uh, tiny battery shown here. Uh, firmware can be modified to switch to fast tracking mode by sending command to the device when it uh, pings every day. Suppose if you lost your device and the device is still running uh, at uh, one ping per day, uh, you can, if you send a command to it, then it will uh, uh, wake up uh, the next day or uh, whenever the next interval is coming up, that time it will check the command and switch to fast tracking mode so that you can go and find your asset. And uh, uh, V2MF supports uh, Google Cloud Platform. We tested the, the device with uh, by changing the MCU to an L4 series. Uh, it needs some uh, more capabilities in terms of both the uh, code memory and the uh, data memory for uh, storing the keys and uh, uh, also processing this encryption and everything. So uh, this uh, same MCU stm 30 l 51 can be uh, replaced with an uh, equivalent stm 30 l 412 series for supporting Google Cloud Platform. They are both footprint compatible, so we don't need to change the hardware for that. The rest of the hardware remains same. Uh, the SOS button is provided, which is used for uh, entering into configuration mode when you are configuring the device through Bluetooth, and it can be used for emergency alerts. Uh, by pressing the button you can send an SMS or uh, uh, generate a call to emergency contacts and EEPROM uh, is provided for uh, data storage for uh, saving the configuration data and uh, also for storing the logs uh, in case the GSM signal becomes unavailable and uh, the nano sim card uh, holder is provided uh, uh, for uh, sim card insertion this is, is selected uh, because of its small size and the ufl antenna connector is provided uh, which is uh, uh, used for uh, connecting the gsm uh, antenna so that's all for now uh, that's all the update we have for in this video uh, we'll keep you posted on further developments if you are interested in this device you can uh, drop me a mail to ravi at valetron.com and uh, you can visit our store uh, valetron.com slash store uh, for purchasing our devices and if you have any technical queries uh, uh, you can uh, post it on embedded advice forum uh, which we created for such discussions thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe